boy, it's time for... Imagination! We don't need television. Not as long as we have our... Imagination! What you just saw was two clips. The Spongebob episode Idiot Box, which aired in 2002, and the season 14 episode Squidiot Box from 2024, which stirred up the community to ask, what does it seem like they're constantly having to go back to older episodes to make new episodes? Is Spongebob losing its imagination? This is yet another example of the crew using older material as the basis of a newer episode. And while polarizing, there's a very simple way to find out if this claim is true, with three points that people should speak about. Let's go through it. This episode is missing such a crucial scene, it's honestly surprising. And speaking of, how well do you remember Idiot Box? The episode was super simple. It was Spongebob and Patrick having the greatest time of their lives in this box, and Squidward over time getting so curious with what's happening in the box that while his pride wouldn't let him admit that to Spongebob, he'd eventually succumb to the intrigue. Let me show you this clip and take note of the numbers at the top because it contains the missing key. Let's play Mountain Climbing Adventure! Let's go for it! I hope they put some air holes in that box. Well, you two, shut up! What the? How are you two making that noise? Ah, what noise, Squidward? I could only hear the sound of our laughter. Forget it. It's relatable for kids who've used their imagination to make fantastic adventures. We get incredible voice acting to really sell the adventures that we weren't seeing, and the progression of Squidward had a great payoff. Then you get to Squidiot Box, and they try to do something different. After trying to get it repaired, Squidward falls into the box in a display of the worst peripheral vision I've ever seen, and we get to see the imaginative aspects of the box as we haven't seen before. Where's the way out of here? Ooh, I'm leaving! So remember that clip I showed you earlier? There was a genius cycle that was perfect for this concept. Squidward dismisses the box as junk, Spongebob and Patrick have a blast, Squidward opens the box to see them sitting in essentially nothing, and Squidward is confused at how they're using the box. That cycle works because they're using their imagination to such a high degree that Squidward cannot comprehend how it all works. And each step is important because if you take it out, the story doesn't work anymore. There's a crucial difference between these two episodes that I feel is a giant misstep for this new episode. Not a single time in this episode, do we see a scene where Squidward was in the box, just using his imagination, sitting in nothing? Not at the beginning, middle, or end. This makes the box feel more like a portal or a holodeck that is powered by imagination and not a plain cardboard box that Spongebob and Patrick made magical by their imagination. There's two types of people. People who know what happened at the end of Idiot Box and people who are about to be confused. So Squidward jumps into the box within the original episode at the end and goes on an adventure not even knowing that the adventure he's on is just the dump truck taking said box to a landfill. It's a genius way to display Squidward's lack of imagination. However, the box is in the dump. Whereas at the beginning of Squidiot Box, it turns out SpongeBob had the box the entire time? My imagination box. I wonder if it still works. However, it's not that deep. It doesn't really matter how they got from point A to point B. But what does matter is that episodes like these basically confirm a timeline and thus continuity. And when people run with the claim that Spongebob episodes have little to no lore, there's no way for them to do continuity, all episodes exist in a vacuum, simply ask them, how can this episode exist before that episode if this new episode is acknowledging the events that happened in that episode? Of course there's no answer to that. The show has done this concept before really well, like in the Salty Sponge, an episode I've talked about before, where we get to finally see what's within Salty Spittoon. It was a fun episode. However, as mentioned before, there's a big difference between a place that's built up to so big that you don't show it for comedy and a box that's just a box unless you use your imagination. What's tragic is that there were other ways that this episode could have gone that would have made this so amazing to see. There are some concepts I'm thinking about in my head that I feel a lot of people would have enjoyed. Apparently the imagination box isn't working the way it used to in the prior episode which 
there's a joke there, but I'm not going to say it. I never found you funny. I never found you entertaining. I never found you smart. I just found you annoying. They take the box to a repair shop where they meet this guy. He's clearly a very zany guy who thrives off his imagination. I was thinking of the wacky adventures the duo were about to go on with this guy to fix the imagination box. And it goes nowhere. We never see this guy again in this episode. What seems to be the problem? Well, the inspiration motor won't turn over. Turn things on the fritz. Yeah, and it doesn't work. This feels like in certain Family Guy episodes where the first five minutes is about something, it doesn't mean anything, and the actual story starts after like 15 cutaway gags, obviously exaggerating. Now, imagine, pun, if the episode went a different way. One of the ideas I was spitballing was Spongebob and Patrick finding the lost imagination, figuring out where it went. You could have even had Spongebob and Patrick try to recreate the old scenes of Idiot Box and realize it doesn't feel the same anymore because the moment has passed. You could have had Spongebob and Patrick try new things now, and while it doesn't give the same feeling as the old moments, it gives a different feeling, which isn't bad. Literally, the start of this episode was like an alley-oop that goes nowhere because instead, we get a super Super safe Squidward goes through pain and inconvenience episode for 11 minutes. Whatever you do, don't imagine a stampede of sea elephants! Thanks a lot! No problem! So is this an open and shut case for Spongebob losing their imagination? Not quite. What people aren't talking about is another season 4 episode that dropped very recently at the time of this video that borrowed from an earlier episode of Spongebob, but you wouldn't have noticed that at first. Hey Spongebob, check out my new snail! Patrick, your snail is a rock. Yeah, thanks, I know. He's got nerves of steel! The Great Snail Race is a fantastic episode, which involves Squidward and Spongebob competing via their pets. And P.S. any time that they're competing in the OG seasons, it was amazing. The running joke in this episode is that Patrick also had a pet which was a rock. And this season 14 episode called Pet the Rock takes from that episode, just not directly. And I think that's why this episode works so much better. <laughs> For one, this episode isn't just copying the Great Snail Race, because it isn't the same rock, it isn't about the same competition between Spongebob and Squidward, it's actually about Patrick being so oblivious to someone wanting to steal his rock named Rolly. Rolly says he wants to play with you! <laughs> Here you go! Have fun, you two! Most people know how dumb Patrick has gotten in these latest seasons, and that's not this episode at all. Yes, he is oblivious, but it's because he wants to be a good pet owner. He spends quite some time asking Spongebob for advice on how to take care of his pet. Wow, Square Pants Resonance. Oh, Spongebob, I don't think Rolly likes TV. He tore up the place. Have you been feeding him? Pets get cranky if they don't get their food. Oh, yeah! Oh. Thanks, buddy. Compare this to how in Pet Sitter Pat, if you remember that episode, that episode was that Patrick is a danger to pets and doesn't think about anyone but himself, but somehow in the end, it was Gary who needed to take care of Patrick. It was a different time, but I'm pretty sure I'm coming back to this episode a lot sooner than I'm ever rewatching that episode. Have the antagonist be someone else. It's so simple that it works. Good day, sir. <laughs> At last, the glimmering contents of your sturdy aspects shall be mine! He's also wacky, but unlike in Squiddy at Box, where we see the wacky character for the first part of the episode and then disappear, this guy here has his grubby villain hands all over this episode, and it works. So towards the background, we're always seeing that Spongebob and Gary are practicing magic and they're quite good at it. It's quite wholesome to see, because we don't get Spongebob and Gary episodes as much as I'd like to see, and because they're not the focus, you get to see them in a more casual light. Plus, it's just funny to see Patrick carry this clearly heavy rock. I don't see you know, this thing is a pet. Oh, yeah. Take a closer look. Oh, yes. He's adorable. 
welcome right in. Whoever that guy is needs a raise for taking a rock to the face. With all of that said, I do have one major complaint, but it requires some context. I love this episode, but I don't necessarily buy the ending and I would be surprised if you did. We're introduced to the pet talent show that SpongeBob had been implied to be training for. Patrick also enters the competition, but again, he has a rock. The joke in the Great Snail Race is that we never see Rocky move, but he ends up winning anyway, especially when most of the competition is either taken out or tending to the people who've been taken out. This episode follows in the same theme of the competition going out of control, but this time Patrick lost control of Roly. <laughs> As you see, the people in the background don't just get crushed, but actually phase out of existence, which, wow. But SpongeBob and Gary remain unharmed. That's important. Everyone else doesn't get this luxury, so you would think it's down to SpongeBob and Patrick. But that's not what the judge says. It seems every other contestant has been eliminated. I suppose you win by default. Oh, um, no, no, no. Whoa, hold on. My guys, Spongebob and Gary, they've been working a long time on their magic act. You're not just gonna pretend that they aren't standing off screen. This is a scam. This is injustice. Spongebob was cheated out of a fair competition. I don't even care that it's his best friend that wins. Cheating is cheating. Patrick, if he was a real one, would have pointed this out. Absolutely zero out of 10 episode. Bubble Bass was right. These episodes need to be torn down. Joking, of course, but it is confusing why they didn't have SpongeBob and Gary get hurt too if they wanted everyone to be eliminated so that Patrick wins by default. Squid Hit Box is okay, but Pet the Rock is a fantastic episode that deserves more praise for being more imaginative with taking from old concepts. I don't think people would believe that SpongeBob is losing its imagination if it keeps cranking out episodes like Pet the Rock. And if you want to see more banger episodes that built off of the lore, check out this video I made about SpongeBob making an episode around the Salty Spittoon.